Hey everyone, this is Joey Casada, otherwise known as Joey Licious. You're listening to Steve, VC, Dylan, and BB on Potter Than Hell. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Potter Than Hell podcast. This is your last stop on the crazy train of hard rock and heavy metal. So sit back, buckle in, and hang on. Here we go. Hello, Potter Than Hellions. Welcome back to the Potter Than Hell podcast. This is Steve, your host. I'm joined this week by... BC. And... BB. With the Vinny Vincent shirt on today. Happy birthday! Yay. <laughs> and on keyboards today will be Dylan. And we have a special guest, another newbie this week. And uh, we're going to call him, he's our drummer for the week, Mr. Joey Casada. How are you, my friend? Woo! What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Hey, it's great to have you. Um, actually, I just did an interview with Joey um, a couple days ago. And we're going to put that out as a bonus episode. So you may have heard it already and you may hear it after. So I'm not really sure when it's, but it's going to be a bonus episode. Uh, we had a great conversation, and uh, Joey, uh, give your give your book and all your stuff a plug before we get going here. Absolutely. So my autobiography is out right now. It's called "Start with a Dream: A Drummer's Journey from Rock and Roll to TV to Broadway." The forward of the book is by the man himself, none other than Peter Chris. Um, he was kind enough to do the forward to my book, and it's it's really a Kiss fan story. Whoever, who's ever already read it, or if you haven't read it yet. It's a pure Kiss fan story. It's about how I saw Kiss in 1979 at Madison Square Garden. And from that moment on, my life was consumed not only with Kiss, but wanting to be a superstar drummer like Peter Chris, and then eventually Eric Carr also. And it just follows me through my career. It's a nostalgia book. It follows me all through the 80s and, you know, recapping me running to record stores or going to Ticketmaster and trying to buy the concert tickets and, you know, magazines to try to figure out when, when the new album was out and... It really follows me all throughout my career, and then eventually my band ZO2 had the chance to open up for Kiss on the Rock the Nation tour, and that's kind of where it climaxes. You know, I've done stuff after that, of course. I, I, you know, maybe we'll we'll talk about it later, but you'll hear more about it on the bonus episode. But the book is out now. It's called Start with a Dream. You can get it on Amazon.com. You can get the audio book narrated by me, forward by uh, wrestling superstar Chris Jericho on the audio book. And uh, that's on iTunes and, and Amazon as well. I think it's it's a fun read. Like I said, if you're a Kiss fan, it's a really feel good Kiss fan story. Lots of behind the scenes stories of me on the Kiss tour. Yeah, thanks, Joey. And, and like I said, that, uh, the interview with Joey was fantastic. Uh, he touched on it too with him narrating the book. Awesome. And you guys out there that have listened to the show, you know, I've talked about Steve Lukather's book, how great it was, you know, listening to his book with him narrating it, that it was just a, you know, sit, like sitting down and having a beer with a guy. Same exact thing with Joey's book. It's just a fantastic. It's just like, you know, sitting there shooting the shit. Fantastic. So I, I highly recommend get the book as well because there's a ton of cool pictures, behind the scenes shit. Um, there, there's pictures there of, of uh, you know, Kiss playing wiffle ball with these guys. Um, <laughs> freaking awesome. And, you know, tons of stuff like that. And also, the audio book is fantastic because um, at times when Joey's talking about, like, his band uh, playground in the club days and stuff like that, he'll, there, there's, and it's the first time I've ever heard, I've listened to hundreds of audio books and, and tons of biographies and autobiographies of rock guys and stuff like that. Never once have I heard any music on any of these things. Every time Joey talks about a certain band or something like that, a song from the band that he was in plays on the audiobook. That's cool. And it was just kick ass. So um, it's an added bonus in there in the audiobook. So, I mean, I totally recommend both. I, I, I enjoyed the hell out of both of them. So once again, Joey, thanks for um, joining us tonight. I wanted to get Joey on a regular episode here because uh, we had such a great conversation. And, and I know he, he does a, a lot of stuff with um, Podcast Rock City. He's on there at least once a month. And he, he's on with Tom and Zeus. And I figure we could do something that is just not a KISS episode. And he could do just some kind of, um, you know, something rock-oriented other than just totally KISS. So, Absolutely. Uh, and, guys, thanks so much for having me. Really, I'm, I'm a huge fan. And, you know, I think last week you guys had Sonny Pooney on, right? Yes. Yep. Yep. So, obviously, I mean, th there's no easier one to follow than Pooney. If, I mean, I can't, be, I can't be as bad as him. So <laughs> No, 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 for he's sure. He's an easy person to follow. I think, you have, I think we'll find that you have better taste in music than Sonny because he likes <laughs> some crazy shit. 
Oh, he's the worst. And he and he hates <laughs> and he hates a lot of good stuff too. It's crazy. <laughs> totally. For sure. So um, before we get rocking into the episode, we'll do uh, what we're listening to. Uh, we'll start with our new our new guest, Joey. What are you listening to these days? So uh, I'm a I'm a tremendous tr- Striper fan, and I've been a Striper fan since you know the first record, Yellow and Black Attack. I love 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 Striper. Almost everything they've ever put I'm, out, I'm a big fan of. I was lucky lucky enough to get an advanced copy of their new record. I know this single is already out, but I have the whole record. It is it's phenomenal. The production, the songs, everything about it. The new album I think it's called um, "Even the Devil Believes." I, yep. I think that's yep. that's what it's called, and uh, it just kicks ass all the way through. It's it's heavy striper. There's a couple cool melodic songs which I actually wish they would get a little bit back into more of the melodic stuff. They they've been so heavy for so long, you know, trying to prove something. I want to hear a little bit more of the melodic stuff, but that's what I've been listening to right now. I love Striper, everything they do. Awesome, yeah, and, and I mean they've released two songs from the new album coming out, and I think it comes out in a couple weeks. Um, and the two songs <coughs> they've re, um, put out already were really good. BC, how about you? What do you got going? Do you have time to listen to anything, BC? Just in the truck, so I've been listening to you to see Lynch Mob and uh, not Striper. I'm drawing a blank. Anyways, <laughs> that's the way my week's going. That's the way my week's going. Just oh, jeez. Uh-oh. Damn, 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 damn. <laughs> How about you, Dylan? I just uh, was perusing through Apple Music today, and I saw that Mastodon had a new song out, and I was excited. And then I realized it was from a, an upcoming B-Sides album called Medium Rarities. Uh, but this song was unreleased before. So it's called Fallen Torches. Really good Mastodon song. I'm really excited for that uh, <laughs> Rarities album because they do a cover of Orion by Metallica. The oh, yeah. best instrumental for Metallica. It's Dad. not, but that's okay. It's better than Call of Cthulhu, and you know it. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to hear him back to back. But uh, I'm very excited for that album. So a little bit of Mastodon in my ear pen, right. ear buds. All right. <laughs> Whatever they're called. BB, how about you? Uh, so last weekend, uh, I think it was uh, Saturday. I, I know Steve watched this. Uh, the Rock and Roll Residency had like a little uh, video concert that they probably played for almost two hours. And our friend Ryan Cook, he mentioned that Hair of the Dog just released an album. And I didn't, I haven't heard that they were going to do any of this, but uh, it was released in May. It's called Big Bones. And even even like the, the big hits from those guys, um, Cadillac Jack, Whiskey Tango, Sweet Lady Vegas, they redo a, 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 a song as I am, it's fantastic. Just one of those bands that are just out there, just a rock. It's just a great punch you in the face rock and roll album. And honestly, this album is so good. This is the only thing I listen to all fucking week. Oh yeah, no oh, shit. <laughs> and that's odd for me every cool. day. Boop, yeah, boop, it's like a compilation of the, from their three albums. It's yeah. fantastic. And, and uh, Ryan and, and Jeremy and Phil, great, great guys. For me, I I was actually surprised. I was going through my Apple Music the other day and it has has the new releases on Fridays and and I saw that Alcatraz has a new album. I'm like, hmm, Alcatraz, shit, man. I haven't you know heard, that heard from them in a while. But I know that Graham Bonnet's been doing stuff because he put out a solo album last year. So I figured oh, I'll check it out. So the first song comes on, I'm like, that's eh, okay. And like after the first song, I mean the first song is good. But like after that, I'm like, holy fuck, this album blew my mind. It was so fucking excellent. The guitar player is Joe Stump, and like I, I know I've heard the name before, but I we just looked him up on Discogs. He has a ton of albums out. Like he's like a shredder, and I've heard the name, but I, I couldn't place him where I knew him from. I it's probably just the name that I heard. He plays fantastic. It's like old Ingve type stuff before Ingve lost his mind. Um, <laughs> Very, very good album. Um, the the vocals on it are, are a little straining, I think, for Graham Bonnet. But you know what? The album is so good, I can I can absolutely look past that. And a band that we saw on Kiss Cruise Eight, Thunder Mother. They have a new album out. Great hard rock album. All female band. Um, just a good hard rocking band. Kind of like uh, like a female Airborne BB. Okay. Kind of gotcha. like that kind Love of uh, thing. Yeah. And um and our buddy. Uh, Mark Anthony K. I, he put out that um, the Dark Monarchy album with uh, Joe Bailey that he collaborated with on the last Project Gemini album. I've been rocking that out. That's really good too. There's got some great songs on there. So um, that's what we're listening to. I have Alcatraz and Thunder Mother and the Dark Monarchy. Uh, BC's got Lynch Mob and he's not sure who else. Um, <laughs> BB's got Hair of the Dog, Big Bones. 
Um, I heard you okay. like Big Bones, BB. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I am 6'3". Yeah. <laughs> I'm not fat, I'm Big Boned. That's right. Um, uh, Dylan's got the new Mastodon song, Falling Torches, and uh, Joey's listening to <coughs> the new Striper album, Even the Devil Believes, which which I can't wait to hear. And actually, it, it's funny you brought them up today, Joey. Uh, I pre-ordered the vinyl from Frontiers Records, uh, and BC did too. And so I get an email today, and, and I looked it up. I paid, it was like $42 for the shipping and shit like that. It was coming from Italy or, or wherever they're based. So I get an email today saying with all this covid shit and everything like that <laughs> they wanted another twenty dollars to ship it. what yeah i'm like what i'm like are you kidding me so like i canceled my order and you can order the vinyl on amazon for 26 bucks so <laughs> wow i'm not paying crazy. fucking 62 dollars for the striper album when i can get it for <laughs> less than half of that on amazon i mean it wow. was a you know a gold you know colored vinyl i could live without that but um did you get the email i sent you baby or bc I didn't order from Frontiers. Oh, you didn't? I looked at, I was going through it today because I'm like, I didn't get no email. So I'm going through, going through, and I order from, I forget what the name is. Because I got like a shirt and everything. Oh, jeez, I got boned geez, again. See? I got boned again, damn it. That same thing happened to me with the fucking <laughs> a $90 main album, album and no shirt. God damn it. See? Ah, come and BC is the it. non technical it, one here. It's whoever I got the pretty maids out of. Well, I didn't. I didn't see that. All I saw was the. God damn it! I got boned again. All right. Terrible. I can't believe they would. Call, they would email you after you paid to give them more money. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. We're not going to yeah. ship it unless you give us more money. Yeah, yeah. we we want twenty more euros for us to ship it DHL. I'm like, what the fuck? God, talk about. I was How much like, did uh, you ship no, it? Uh, cancel it. But I'll tell you what though, um, they refunded my my paypal account within 10 minutes when i sent the email well, that's good. so that's i didn't great. have to you know they didn't tie up my money like uh remember that what the hell was that other company that what we paid for get? all the albums and shit that we got the last in line from oh yeah that company uh joey you yeah. remember who they they would sponsor the bands and they would pay oh uh, uh, oh Right? Yeah, oh, it was shit. last in line. And uh, yeah, it was yeah. the last in line. I don't I, remember. I ended up, BB got just the fucking album sleeve autographed and no album. And no it. album. <laughs> like, like, um, yeah, sorry, all right, I guess I'll put it on the oh, wall. What the hell was that called? I know what you mean. Oh, Pledge Music. Pledge, Pledge Music. Pledge Music. Pledge music. music. There yes, you go. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, Reddy. Yeah, boy, a lot of people got fucked on those guys. So, I and and, and Frontiers has a, a ton of great bands and stuff like that. So, they you seem know, good. But, I mean, that's, I mean, that was ridiculous, though. So, I'm just going to buy it on Amazon. If Amazon doesn't have it, you don't need it, Steve. That's true. Well, I, I already ordered the pre-ordered the, the CD from Amazon, so I might as well just get the fucking vinyl too. Yeah. All right, we wanted to. Do, I wanted to do something different on this episode, rather than you know pick some albums and talk about them and songs and shit like that. Um, we're gonna talk about our influences here today. We're, I told each guy pick you know up to six things that influenced you musically, whether it be uh, you know a movie you saw or a soundtrack you listened to or. It could even be a friend that introduced you to, you know, a new style of music or a new band or something like that. So I kind of wanted to, to do something like that, where um, it was just kind of a, a, a loose conversation and, you know, taking your, taking you back, you know, thinking about when you first started, you know, getting into music and, you know, different styles of music and everything like that. So, um, you know, I just wanted to do something that wasn't too crazy intense, you know, for listening to, you know, 80 songs to, to be ready for the episode in like five days. So, um, you know, I just want to do something like that. And um, let's do this. Um, let's do this age wise. <laughs> All right. So, so, wow. so I think it's going to be, it's going to be Dylan, BB, Joey, then BC, then me, I think. Okay. All right. Joey, <laughs> what year were you born in? 74. Okay, 74. So that's going to be the order. It's going to be so he, okay. D- Dylan, BB. No, Dylan, D- Dylan, Dylan, Joey. Dylan, Joey. BB, BC, you. Yeah, okay. I was Where born in 72. You? Oh, 72. Okay. <laughs> Come on! Come on! Oh, All right. Here we go. Joey, I, I, I do this all the time. I, I just, I, and, and I'll probably lose track of the, you know, let me write the order write, down write right the now. Write the order down okay, right now. Okay, Dylan. You know I'm first. <laughs> Joey. <laughs> And then we'll do the gems, and then we'll do three more. Then we'll do BB. Part of the BC. Hell Podcast. You come for the conversations. BC. You stay for Steve trying to figure out yeah. what's going on. <laughs> we have hours and hours of blooper reels. For <laughs> okay, um, Dylan. Okay. Go ahead, my friend. Take it away. Take so uh, this was this was interesting to think about because music has been a very big part of my life. 
I, I mean, growing up with Steve Wright, it's almost impossible for it not to be. Even Carson, uh, my brother, had a big music involvement, although he, he strayed away. and Yeah, and some weirdly he goes, terrible. He goes country and, and rap sometimes. But, I mean, I also do rap at times. Like, I'm... I'm probably I probably have the most diverse music tastes are at the table right now. Exactly. Uh, but exactly. Uh, so that that's why this list is going to be a little different, I think, from everybody else's. You know, even even without factoring in the age stuff, because I have some different avenues that I, I went down. But anyways, I'll start. I'm going to try and go a little chronological order a little bit. Uh, and the first influence, of course, was my parents, uh, Steve and Corey Wright. Uh, I say both of them because they both have different, very different tastes of music. Uh, <laughs> Growing up, we would be driving in our car, and there would either be Rock 107 on, our local radio station that does classic rock music, or it would be Magic 93, which is the hits of yesterday and today, which was more <laughs> pop-oriented. With Delilah. Uh, my mom always loved 80s stuff, like Duran Duran, and um, she liked In Excess, even though they're more 90s-ish, but uh, she was very much into that kind of music, and my dad was into... Uh, I don't know. I don't know what my dad was into. Everything. But, yeah, everything. <laughs> but I grew up in a in a house where there were Iron Maiden cloth banners on on the walls that would scare the shit out of me as a kid. Um, I remember one time because uh, we used to live in rooms that were basically right next to each other without a door between us, and he would have the radio on, and Enter Sandman would come on at nine o'clock at night, and the hush little baby. <laughs> do- that part scared the shit out of me as a kid. I was terrified. Dylan can't sleep to this day. <laughs> um, and then Little Steven's Underground Garage, the intro to that, freaked me out. And that's when I would turn it off because I hated that show. <laughs> that like that intro was so creepy for some reason, even though the show itself was like not even close to that. But uh, I would say that the first big influence on my musical taste was with both of my parents. And they, they sort of guided me in that direction. Uh, the next thing that, that really grabbed me was the movie Almost Famous. Uh, directed by Cameron Crowe. A uh, great movie about a, a... It's basically almost autobiographical for Cameron Crowe when he was a music journalist as a kid. He would kind of lie about his age to get backstage at concerts and interview bands. And the main character goes with the band, the fake band Stillwater, which those songs are actually really those good. Those songs were fucking excellent on there. But it, that movie was the first movie that I could remember the music being such an important part of it uh, that I really enjoyed I, it got me into The Who. I was in a huge The Who phase back in the day. That was my band. Uh, I'm sure my dad remembers how much I was like, I want Tommy. <laughs> because that the one scene where Zoe Deschanel's character is like, if you if you listen to Tommy while staring at the flame of a candle, you could see your future. And that, that was something that <laughs> blew my mind. I was, I was so fascinated by that. And I listened to the album, and it's such a weird album. <laughs> but uh, it's so good. And that, that started me on my journey of 70s bands that – was a little bit away from dad's metal. He would dabble in the 70s stuff a little bit here and there, but uh, that's that's what got me towards, you know, a little earlier than heavy metal. It was, you know, classic rock stuff. Uh, the next thing that influenced me was actually Saturday Night Live. Uh, the musical guest on Saturday Night Live was musical guest. You know, the Don Pardo voice. You remember Don Pardo. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that was a huge influence on me just... The very first time I watched Saturday Night Live where I was old enough to stay up and <laughs> and actually be awake for the whole thing instead of falling asleep, it was Amy Adams hosting with uh, the van, the band Vampire Weekend playing um, – yeah, you guys have never heard of them. They're no. an alternative band. They're good though. <laughs> but uh, I remember just watching Green Day play and Will Ferrell would do uh, – did his more cowbell sketch on one mm-hmm. of those – like with one of their songs, he would play cowbell with them. <laughs> that was That was fascinating to me and – even even the Don't Fear the Reaper sketch, the more cowboy sketch itself, that's sure. that really fascinated me. And uh, also Wayne's World is also pretty tied in with that because Wayne's World introduced me to Alice Cooper in in the flesh. You know, I'd heard the songs on the radio, but then seeing him in the Wayne's World movie, which of course is a spinoff from SNL, uh, was just life changing to me because Alice Cooper is the artist that I've seen the most live. I've seen him. Well, we've seen him what twelve times, something like that, yeah, uh, including with Hollywood Vampires, but. Saturday Night Live was, a, was another big influence on me. Uh, the next one kind of brings in uh, BB a little bit as well. Guitar Hero and Rock Band. Oh, man, was that fun. <laughs> yeah. I remember being at one of our, our friends' house. We used to have Fourth of July parties. Well, we, they still happen, but we didn't have it yeah. this year because yeah. of COVID. But uh, at, at the Haken's house, and their, their two young sons 
well, they're older than me, but <laughs> they were young then. They had Guitar Hero 2, and they, they asked me and my brother to, if they, we wanted to play, and I was, I was very curious about it. It's like, this looks pretty cool. It's an actual guitar controller. It almost feels like I'm playing guitar. It's nothing like actually playing guitar, but it felt, <laughs> it felt important then. And I remember the first song I ever played on Guitar Hero 2 was Surrender by Cheap Trick. And I just, nice. it, was, it was fascinating to me that, that I could push the buttons and make the music happen. And that eventually led me into forming my own band with some classmates of mine. But that Guitar Hero 2 specifically introduced me to Weezer because my name is Jonas was on there, which is a Terrible. weird song. Oh, let's stop it. <laughs> Weezer's great. Uh, it introduced me to Primus because John the Fisherman. Yeah. was on there. Uh, Avenged Sevenfold, uh, Beast in the Harlot was on there. So there was all these different songs that were unlike anything I'd ever heard before because I just grew up listening to Magic 93 and Rock 107. And then here I am listening to Warana, you know, it's, it just <laughs> blows your mind. And I remember the hardest song in Guitar Hero 2 was Freebird. And if you can get through the, the, the long solo at the end, that was your street cred. And then Guitar Hero 3 was Through the Fire and Flames from Dragon Force. That song is fucking wild. But uh, Guitar Hero and Rock Band, we would come over BB's house uh, and play with, with BB and his kids and his wife. We, we would have Guitar Hero Rock Band nights. We would play ACDC's Live at Donington. They had a rock band pack for that. And we would just jam out. Dad got 100% singing Beastie Boys Sabotage yep. without knowing a single yep. word to the song. Yep, I, I just scattered like... <laughs> scored 100%. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> and, and like, those are such vivid and fond memories for me. And they, they really helped shape what, what my taste in music was going forward. Uh, the second to last thing that I want to talk about, uh, the video game series Grand Theft Auto. Uh, besides the killing and the... <laughs> the vehicular manslaughter that happens in that video game. They have really good soundtracks, uh, especially Vice City had a fantastic soundtrack. It was all 80. It was a, based in the 80s. So it was all 80s music. It was 80s metal. Uh, you had, you know, Pat Benatar and you had all these different things. And that really introduced me to a lot more things. Uh, I think in San Andreas, Killing in the Name from Rage Against the Machine was on there. And that was the first time I heard that song. And that blew me away. And Rage Against the Machine is a fantastic band, but that was another thing that. Oh, stop shaking your head! I'm not going to judge anything I'm you my, say. I'm stretching my neck. I'm stretching my neck. <laughs> it's going to sore neck. And then the last thing I want to cover is uh, being in a band and and getting music recommendations from like my bandmates. Uh, one of them, uh, our lead singer Tony. He, I would always hang out because both of our parents worked at our elementary school, and we would hang out in his mom's classroom until we had to go to school. Uh, you. Know, in the elementary school or in the high school because the high school was right across the street from the elementary school. But every day he would have a different artist playing on the computer. And that's how he got into the White Stripes and Alkaline Trio and bands like that. And then, you know, eventually one of our friends, Joey, not not the Joey on the call, but <laughs> a different Joey, he, uh, he was a really good guitar player. We managed to snag him and another friend of ours to play drums uh, and form a band. And it ended up being a pop punk band, but uh, it was still a lot of fun to be on stage and just learn a di whole different genre of music that I had never been exposed to. And then it was very much similar to the energy of heavy metal, but it had the lighter vo like uh, choruses that, that you could sing along to on the radio, and it just fascinated me. And you guys recorded two albums, too. We did. We, we recorded an EP with full vocals, uh, and I'm, I'm actually still really proud of how they came out because they sound fantastic. Plus, you can hear me play bass guitar. So, and that and Guitar Hero basically got me my bass guitar because my parents saw how much that I loved playing Guitar Hero, and they thought, "Hey, why don't you try actual guitar?" And knowing myself, I, I was I was like, "Okay, I probably can't do full guitar. Why don't you give me a bass guitar?" <laughs> and uh, I ended up learning how to do that. And I'm left-handed, so I, I learned how to play right-handed because for some reason. In my mind back in the day, it made more sense to me that the hand that I write with is the hand that I fret with, since that's the one doing the complicated moves. But yeah, that, those are those are kind of my influences, you know, music-wise growing up. And I remember um, just just one thing quick. I, I won't drag it out too much. When um, and, and actually it ties in with hair, the dog BB on um, Whiskey Tango, and when they go one. 
two. <laughs> and I remember driving down the road when that song's playing, both him and his brother in their car seats would be going three, <laughs> four. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ryan Cook, you helped my, my kids learn how to count. Um, very cool, very cool, Dylan. All right, um, Joey, how about you? What do you got, my friend? All right, so I went with, you know, some of these things are very general things. Some of these things are very specific. So for me, age is so, so important when it comes to influence. I, I always felt, and I even feel today that, you know, between the ages of like nine and 13, those four years are so influential and it, it, it shapes not only your musical taste, but just it almost shapes your personality. It shapes your love of, you know, things in the world, pop culture, whatever it is. So those years were so, so influential on me. You know, some a couple of things are a little earlier, a couple of things are a little later. But what I'm going to start with is, and this is a general category, but it had such a big impact on me. And even though I hate to call it this, I'm going to call it this for, for this podcast. It's basically just the genre of hair metal. So when, when that genre came out, obviously it wasn't known as hair metal back then. It was just, you know, it was really just rock or metal back then, you know, in the, in the mid 80s. We're talking, you know, the biggest impact, you know, of those bands and stuff back then. Obviously, Kiss has always been the biggest impact for me. But, you know, when Slippery When Wet came out that summer, you know, that summer of 1986, I believe it came out. I'm about 12 years old. My friends, you know, when I, my friends and I all grew up. We were pretty much all jocks and I was. I was a jock, but I was also the rocker kid in, in the group. And once, you know, Slippery When Wet came out, it became cool to like that kind of music. I was already into it. I already loved Kiss, you know, and then the early 80 bands like Twisted Sister, Quiet Riot Rat, all that stuff. But they were never into that stuff. But once Slippery When Wet hit, it became accepted in society to like this kind of music. And it really became the popular music of the time. So those bands, you know, the Cinderella's and the Bon Jovi's and Def Leppard and, you know, all these bands that were from, you know, 85 to 87 just had such a tremendous impact on my not only my musical taste, but, you know, even my dress back then. You know, it, unfortunately for me, I was too young to I was already in bands, but I never was able to do anything yet because I was only about 11 or 12 years old. And by the time I started my own bands, which was around 1989, 1990, I'm about 16 now, 15, 16, that music is slowly going away. So by the time I got into recording and, you know, shopping to record labels and stuff, I'm still recording, you know, stuff that sounds like Skid Row and, you know, Nirvana's hitting. So it just killed, you know, my musical career took a real standstill during those times. But I always have such fond memories of hair metal. So that's where I wanted to start. It's not necessarily my biggest influence, but that's kind of where I wanted to start. Then from there, again, I have a, a pretty wide range uh, of musical taste as well. The movie Grease was such a such a big movie for me. And again, I didn't even realize it at the time, but my, you know, my family would watch it. And from that point, it just opened up my musical taste. And I didn't see it, you know, in 1978 when it came out came out i probably saw it more you know 82 83 84 somewhere around that area and you know again i'm nine years old ish somewhere around that area and it really opened up my taste for other genres of music and still to this day i love musicals i love disney cartoons i love lion king i love little mermaid is amazing hercules is one of my favorite disney cartoons but mainly because of the music i'm so into that feel good, and I hate to say it, but that Disney music, even my kids today watch the Disney Channel, and I love all the musicals on there. There's two musicals on there right now that they're obsessed with, and I love them just as much as they do, called Zombies and Descendants. Mm -hmm. And it just has catchy, feel good music. And that's even why I, I became a Broadway musician after you know my rock career started winding down a little bit. I was actually on Broadway for a few years, and I, I just love the theater. I love that type of feel good energy, super catchy Disney song. So Grease kind of turned me on to that whole genre of music. And it really wasn't accepted amongst my friends, but I still loved it anyway. So from there, I wanted to go, you, might, you know, we'll, we'll reach my first Kiss influence. And this is, it might be my biggest, but I didn't put it at number one just because there's something else that I wanted to put at number one. So for Kiss, Still, to me, my favorite record of all time is Kiss Alive 2. It's, it, to me, it's the be-all, end-all of Kiss records. I, don't get me wrong. I love Kiss Alive 1. 
and it's a phenomenal record. But something about the edge of that super kiss starting the, those second three albums always resonated a little more than the first three. I love the first three, but Destroyer, Rock and Roll Over, and Love Gun to me, that's my kiss. That's the kiss that is amazing to me. And then, you know, the solo albums and so on and so forth. But Kiss Alive 2 was my Bible growing up. All I listened to was Kiss Alive Live 2. It was everything to me. I can play every lick on that record. I can recite every rap. I could do anything you want to do on that record. It's it's the be all end all of all records to me. So that was it's not wasn't my first Kiss record that I ever had. It wasn't my first introduction to Kiss because, like I said, I saw them in 1979 when I was five years old. But it was the biggest impact on me at that time. So Kiss Alive Two is uh, right up there. So that was that would be my number three, I guess we'll call it. So then. Again, I move, I, I shift over to a completely different genre. We're going to go 80s pop music had such a big impact on me as well. And I'm not talking, you know, the hair metal stuff. I'm talking about, you know, Corey Hart, Sunglasses at Night and Rick Springfield and, you know, those 80s soundtracks like Flashdance and catchy, you know, exciting um, you know, Eye of the Tigers, maybe my favorite song of all time, it's, if not top two or three songs of all time. That Rocky Four soundtrack is is one of my favorite records of all time. But all that stuff back then, you know, you have Gloria and, you know, like I said, Rick Springfield with American Girl from Private School and all those songs from those teen 80s movies, Breakfast Club, all that stuff was had such an impact on me, not only because I love the movies, but because I loved the music inside those movies. And that, you know, triggered that love of 80s pop, whether it was Michael Jackson, Prince, Madonna, you know, all the big popular ones, all the way to, like I said, the Corey Hearts and Rick Springfield. I've actually been listening to a lot lately, <laughs> which is, I know it's crazy. Maybe I would get killed for it, but that's good stuff. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, again, I don't know what you guys love. So I'm curious to hear your, your thoughts on some of the stuff I'm throwing out there. But this is the stuff that not only influenced me, but I still listen to today. Like I said, I have a, a Rick Springfield playlist I was just listening today by, you know, by the pool outside on my Alexa. So it's just great feel good music. And I'm I'm all about music feeling good. That's why I never got into grunge. I like feel good, high en energy music again. And that's why I'm a huge Kiss fan. Kiss was all about positive messages and positive music. So that will transfer into my number one all time biggest music influence. And again, I could have gone so many ways. Like I said, I saw Kiss in Madison Square Garden in 1979, even though that was my start of my musical passion. It wasn't my biggest influence because I was so young still. And then even my first Kiss record ever was double platinum. Even that, it, it had a big impact on me, but it didn't have the impact that this number one has. And it's Kiss Animal Eyes Live Uncensored, the video. That videotape, I wore out constantly and again we're talking 1985 i think it was released so i'm 11 years old it's to me the prime years of being influenced by music and pop culture and tv and wrestling and all the stuff that i i love today so much that i that's when i got into it around those years 9 10 11 12 years old so kiss animalized live uncensored was really my first time that i could see kiss at home live in concert as much as I wanted. There was no bootlegs. There's no there's no YouTube. There's no internet. I didn't have cable TV till almost 1991. You know, in my area where I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, we didn't have cable TV. So I didn't even have MTV until like 1991. So I had nothing. All I had were videotapes. And, you know, this video of Kiss Animalized Live Uncensored became my Bible. That was the thing that I listened to more than anything in the history of my musical career. And again, same thing like Kiss Alive 2. I can play every lick on it. I know every rest stage rap. I can tell you where Paul's moving next. I can tell you where Gene sticks out his tongue. It just, it was everything to me growing up. So that would be my top five. There's so many more, but I, if I had to narrow it down, those would be mine. Awesome. All right, so we'll go around and we'll talk about uh, your two guys thing, then Dylan, you can talk about Joey's and Joey well, can talk about yours. Uh, what do you what do you think about Dylan's and uh, Joey's, BB? Yeah, two great stories and, and more Dylan's because you know I watched Dylan grow up from a, a wee little lad that he was <laughs> to pulling down all the CDs on Steve's 
um, <laughs> CD rack, and we would just sit there and watch and giggle and then pick up all the CDs and put them back. And But it just great memories, especially from for, like, Dylan playing um, – Guitar Hero at the house. It's just it's just great to see, you know, what a young, great walking jukebox that, that Dylan has turned into be because it's great to have him here. He's always that young he always has that different aspect of the music genre that, that you know, sometimes we like, sometimes we don't like that we pick on, but just fantastic stuff. And Joey Joey's almost, you know, pretty much you know, we're pretty most close to the same age, so you know the hair metal, the kiss. You know, that's also right in my wheelhouse, and uh, just great stories from the two of you. It just you know brings back a lot of memories. Really cool. Cool. All right, BC. Hmm. Well, like BB said, watching Dylan grow up, and I think we're all there for that CD rack thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a couple times. A couple of times. Not <laughs> once. Not twice. Probably three. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, and here we are. I mean. From growing from a little boy up to playing in a band, and like you said, he always brings the the young side, the younger, young, the younger like side the young, uh, of music. Young. I would say, like the younger crowd, maybe. And Joey, yeah. I mean, listening to you, your stories, there's, I mean, we're close in age. Just growing up, I mean, it's, you look back now, and it's like, wow. I mean, we grew up in such a great time, all of us. And, and, and Dylan, he, he he got in before it got too crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but just stories are just are opening my mind so many more memories as I'm listening to you guys talk. It's like wow. Yeah, and um, I mean, obviously, I, I know Dylan's story, um, uh, but I, I mean, it, it was such a. <laughs> I hope a, he was there for it. It, it was such a, a proud moment as a father to see my son play up on stage with a band in front of people. It was like so cool. It was like I've never told this to anybody, not even my wife. I I cried a little bit when I first saw Dylan up on stage playing. I cried um, a little bit too. It was, uh, <laughs> it, was it, it was it was a proud moment. It was very cool to see him do that. And I've always said, I mean, I'll say bands suck and this and that or whatever, but you know what? I honestly give credit to anybody that has balls enough to get up on a stage and play in front of people. You know, and and I've done it a couple times, um, not very well, mind you, but. Um, it, it's a whole different story from being in the audience and being on the stage, and, and I'm sure no one knows that more than Joey here. But um, very cool, yeah. And and and, my, and actually, since back in the '90s when Dylan was pulling my CDs off <laughs> of my um, CD rack, they still have never ever been back in alphabetical order since then. Listen, <laughs> Joey, I tried. I tried to implement that system. <laughs> it just that it was, just never worked out. That was my own personal penance for yeah for that. And um, in in oh, the uh, almost famous movie was was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And every time I hear Tiny Dancer, I think of that movie yeah. when they're singing it in the bus. It's just mm. freaking phenomenal. Um, and in Joey's Joey, I mean, I could go boom, boom, boom right <laughs> along with yours. Um, the uh, Kiss Alive two, my absolute favorite um, Kiss Live album. And you know, like you say, everyone says Kiss Alive, but like that was the first Alive album that I had from Kiss. I've told the story before. I had to walk through a snowstorm on Christmas Day to walk down to my aunt's house to get it. Um, and Uphill it was, both ways. And it was, it was, with bare feet. Um, <laughs> and, but, I mean, it was it was well worth it. It's still my, my favorite Kiss album to this day. Um, the Animal Eyes Uncensored. And, and I must have watched that hundreds of times. Because, like, and, and that's now, and like you said, that's, that's a blueprint for you. When you listen to stuff like that much and watch it that much, that's the version of the song that you always picture in your mind even now when you see them play it. You you know, you, you wanna say the oohs and ahs that Paul said in between the the in between <laughs> yeah. the you know the, the verses and stuff like that. And and it's it's etched in your mind. And and I oh every time I hear Young and Wasted, I picture Eric Carr singing it. Uh, just you know, stuff like that, freaking excellent. The 80, 80s pop stuff and the uh, Grease movie soundtrack. I was actually gonna bring that up, but I'll I'll, I'll switch that out and I'll just talk about it now real quick. <laughs> Love it. I mean, and that was like, and that brought in like, you know, fi late 50s, 60s music into what we were listening to in the late 70s and 80s. But like, they, it was good stuff, like the Shana Na stuff in that and the the original mo songs in there and stuff like that. Even like the slower ones were, you know, like Hopelessly Devoted to You was like a fucking phenomenal song. Um, just a great soundtrack, but like really, it's, it's always cool hearing people's influence. I can't believe we've never done this show before. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, very. I, I love hearing stuff like this, and this is just like shit we talk about on the porch, having a couple beers, and we're just 
uh, not on the porch. We're just having a couple beers talking about it now. <laughs> so uh, very cool. And so we're going to do our, our gym. So- what? Our you gonna let oh yeah, you guys go see here? Joey. I told you I would fuck this up at some <laughs> point. All right, uh, Dylan, go ahead. Then we'll let yeah, we'll let Joey go. Uh, the one thing that really popped out to me, and I can't believe I didn't mention this, mention this in mind, is the musical portion of of your stuff because musicals were a huge influence on me. Um, when I was younger, I would like do stage shows because that would my my mom thought that it was a good way for me to get some confidence and work on public speaking because I had I had to go to speech therapy for for the longest time and. Musicals were just eye-opening to me that you could tell a story through song, and that's what really opened my eyes to that. Like Mary Poppins is still one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, I, I have such fond memories of that movie, and I still cry every time I see it. And actually, fun fact for everybody on the podcast, uh, you know the the sequel that just came out recently, Mary Poppins Returns? I cried four times watching that in the theaters. It was <laughs> such a magical experience for me. The new one? Yeah. Like... When, when you see Mary Poppins, like, there's, like, the cloud cover and Lin-Manuel Miranda's holding the kite string with the kid. And then the clouds part and Mary Poppins appears in the sky. Like, I got chilled. And then when Dick Van Dyke's dancing on the table, Dad, come on. Like, <laughs> oh, dude. It's so good. But musicals were, were such a huge part of and still are a huge part of my life. Especially the Disney ones, uh, like you said, because, you know, as a kid of the 90s, I grew up in the Disney Renaissance where The Lion King was coming out. Mulan was coming out. And... Uh, Little Mermaid, and well, that was '89, but uh, Beauty and the Beast, and all these wonderful movies that are are able to tell their stories and show the characters' emotions through songs, and that's it. Caused me to look at the music that I listened to before in a different light and think about the the meaning of songs. So I, I'm really glad that you mentioned musicals. All right, very cool, Joey. How about Dylan's list? <laughs> yeah, you, uh, Dylan, how old are you again? Twenty five. So it's so funny. Your list. I, I'm, a, I'm. I teach music a lot too. I'm. A, I'm a drum instructor. I'm a musical director, and it's so funny hearing your list because so many kids today, and it, it's it's a it's a really phenomenal thing. We're in influ- musicians today. Should I should say rather than just kids, we're influenced by rock band and Guitar Hero. Every student that I have, it's it's. I have one student that can play almost every single Beatles song. He is. He's a, I think he's 11 years old, and he can play every Beatles song on the drums completely like Ringo, only from rock band. He had never owned a drum set before he came to my school and started learning, and he immediately set by his first drum set ever and could play almost every single Beatles song note for note because of rock band. So when you were saying all that stuff, it was like I couldn't believe – that it, it's so true that it influenced a, a whole generation, uh, not only of people, but of future musicians. I, I, I can't, it's, it, it's an amazing accomplishment by those companies because it really is creating the next generation of hopefully rock stars. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's funny, Joey, because um, when, when Rock Band was out, uh, a live DVD from Extreme came out. And um, I think uh, "Do You Want to Play" is on that. I think yeah, it's on the Rocks the '80s. That was the like hardest song. Yeah, and um, you know, Nuno said you know before they they started to play the song that you know people were you know influenced by this, and he's like, "Fuck that! Pick up a real guitar and and play and learn and play in front of people." And we were right right in our midst of our rock band playing, and and that night I said, you know what, fuck that, I'm going to learn, I'm going to buy a guitar, learn how to play it, and I'm not going to play rock band again until I play in front of fucking people. And I did, I went, I bought a guitar, I bought an amp, actually the four of us at this table here in, in an actual professional guitar player uh, put together a band and we played a benefit, and, and I played rock band after that, but I have, you know, I didn't play rock band again until I played <laughs> in front of people. So I mean, it was it was cool though. It was it was you know, and, and and just that alone, him saying that wasn't was an influence on me picking up a guitar, which, you know, sadly I haven't really picked one up, you know, in a long time. But they look cool on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, thank God, thank God for, for Guitar Hero and, and Rock Band because obviously you know there's no more MTV, there's no more of that stuff that influenced the you know the little bit of the older generation. Thank God the kids of of Dylan's generation and even you know maybe even up to today have those outlets that they can not only kind of quasi learn how to play instruments, 
but they're getting introduced to all that great music too, where you know they wouldn't hear it otherwise. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they have the Van Halen pack, and they have the Aerosmith yeah. pack, and the ACDC live one, right. Metallica. Yeah. Oh, with the, I didn't. Oh, that's right. I forgot yeah. the Metallica one too. All right. Very cool. So, as in Potter than Hell tradition, we are going to let our guest pick the gem song. So, uh, go ahead, my friend Joey. <laughs> so again, so I was torn. Uh, as we spoke, we said before, Steve and I did an interview earlier this week, too, as, as for like a bonus episode. So, you know, he kind of sway. I was going to go one way, but he kind of swayed me another way. You know, I, I originally was going to pick I'm a big Enough's Enough fan. And Enough's Enough is a band that I think gets lumped in with a lot of, you know, cheesy music, maybe mm-hmm. from back in the 80s where they don't they weren't taken serious because they're, they're kind of known as a glam band for Flying High Michelle and stuff. But. They released about 10 so solid records after that, all through the 90s and the 2000s. So I was going to go that way and tell people all about Enough's Enough and the album and song to listen to. But instead, Steve talked me into going with my own band, ZO2, who, like I said earlier, we toured with Kiss. You know, we opened up for every band you can think of, you know, from Van Halen to Scorpions to Kiss or all these bands. And I would love to pick one of my tracks off our second record called Eight and Beautiful. And the song is called If You See K. It's a very Aerosmith type, straight ahead rock and roll song. We were a power trio, um, guitars, bass, drums, three vocalists, harmonies. We all sang lead also. It's a fun, again, feel good band, very bluesy rock and roll band, much in the vein of Kiss and Aerosmith. So that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with my band. ZO2 off our second record, Ain't It Beautiful, and the song is If You See K.
thanks. Joey picked probably what is my favorite ZO2 song for the Gem Song, If You See K, um, from the Ain't It Beautiful album. Just a phenomenal song. Great band. Uh, absolutely check those guys out. Um, their their music is on uh, Spotify and it's on Amazon Music and Apple Music. So uh, absolutely check them those guys out. And actually, Joey, I'm looking on on Amazon here. Uh, Casino Logic is going for like forty dollars. Nice. Whoa! CD. Hold on a second. I just offered to send you a free copy. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. No, sure. uh, I, I, he's gonna well, sell it. Well, sell it on eBay. Yeah, send me one. I'd appreciate it. But like, I, I swear to God, I'll never sell it. <laughs> Charge no, him. No, dude, of course. I, I, I have Charge plenty. him double. I, I, will, I promise I'll send you one. Awesome. Tell him you're going to send him one, then send him a message three days later about $20 more for shipping. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Postage due. Postage due, damn it. <laughs> All right, uh, so let's let's get into our hidden gems here, and uh, let's go with BB first on this one here. Mm -hmm. All right. I caught this on one of the internet radio stations that I like to listen to. And uh, this is right down BC's alley because I know BC has brought this band up a couple times before. It's Kick Tracy with yeah. their cover of Simon and Garfunkel's Mrs. Robinson. It is, I I can't believe that it just crossed my ear this this really? this week because I kind of forgot about it. I'm like, we just did like a covers saw uh, covers episode. I'm like, damn, this would have been fantastic to put on it. But I'm gonna use that as a gem because the next time we do a covers song episode i'll forget about it but uh, it's, it's off the uh, no rules cd and they twist it around a little bit they make it their own fantastic cover of the old classic song oh cool all right bc what do you got i got a. Uh, here's the other band i was thinking about listening this week is dream theater uh it's a song i just discovered not too long ago off the astonishing which got a lot of slack Fuckers. <laughs> Anyways, it's a <laughs> Our New World featuring Lizzie Hale from Hailstorm. Oh, yeah. I, I think, remember that one. I think that's pretty cool. I, I never heard yeah, of it. Yeah, we got to see them do the whole album. Man, that was a great show. Uh -huh. Not but according to some people. Eh, they were in a bad spot. <laughs> they were. <laughs> they had to be. Anyways, that's that's my opinion. All right, cool. Uh, Joey, how about you, my friend? I Did I go already? No. Oh, for the hit. Didn't I say my hidden gem? Oh well, that was the gem song. We'll we'll just keep it. We'll, we'll just we'll oh, just. No, no, I I have plenty more. Hold oh, on. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> well, I'll come back to you. So. Oh no, go ahead. Perfectly, perfect. So now I can get my enough's enough. Enough's in there. enough. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yep. Enough's enough to me is such an underrated band. Like I mentioned before, they're lumped in with you know a lot of '80s hair bands and the later versions of the '80s hair bands when they maybe weren't too good anymore. You know the. I won't even mention any some of the bands, <laughs> but we know who you mean. Uh, you know, enough. Thank you. Enough's enough. Had they released so many records throughout the '90s, they I'm telling you at least 10, 12 records that every one of them is better than the next. Mm -hmm. And probably my favorite out of all of them is the record called Paraphernalia, and it's I, I forget what year it was released, but it's it's much later in their in their catalog. It's just top to bottom. Mm -hmm one of the best records you'll ever hear. There's a song on it called um, Ain't It Funny, and it, it, it's it's just a phenomenal track. It's the whole record. It's, it was so hard to even pick one song from the record, but I would go with Ain't It Funny, and it's it's just a solid rock track, one of the best songwriting duos I've, I've ever heard. Again, I know I it's maybe sacrilege to a lot of people, but Donny Vi and uh, Chips Enough, they just have so many great songs in their catalog. That's what I'm going to go with today. Enough's enough. Ain't it funny? Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, those guys played on Kiss Cruise. I think it was six. Saw them like three times. And it's just chips enough now in the band because they obviously, right. you know, had parted their ways. But I mean, great. And they, you know, they they shook up all their their set lists. I mean, very cool. Chips enough. I'll tell you what. He is a funny <laughs> bastard, man. Just even just hearing him talk, you just laugh because he has that one of those voices that's just like you're like this guy's a freaking riot. He could be reading the you know like a cookbook. And he'd be laughing because of the, the way he talks. Uh, very cool. Um, Dylan, how about you? Uh, my hidden gem is from the soundtrack of a movie called The Crow. Everybody remember that movie? Mm -hmm. Brandon Lee's last movie, unfortunately, yep. because the prop people did not do well with the gun stuff. They did not do good. That's a very sad thing, but a very good soundtrack for the movie. Uh, the song that I want to feature from it is from Pantera. They did do a song called The Badge. Uh, you you might not have heard it because it's only it was only on this uh, this album. It's a very cool song. It's very Pantera. Uh, I could have featured uh, Rage Against the Machine song, Dad's favorite band, or I could have featured uh, 
a, a Joy Division cover, or Nine Inch Nails covering a Joy Division song, because that's really in format, but I decided to go with Pantera, the badge. All right, cool. Yeah, I never heard that. I didn't know they were on there. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Cool. There's, Henry, there's one song on that album that's fantastic, and I just I can't think about Henry it. Henry Rollins yeah. has a song with the yeah. Rollins Band. Ooh. Yeah, uh, that's a cover of a suicide song, Ghost Rider. Hmm. That's cool. There's, there's one on... Uh, Stone Temple Pilots, Big Empty. I'm just going to read through the list for you. The Cure, Burn. Probably not. Uh, Machines no. of Loving Grace, Golgotha, Tenement Blues. No. Uh, da, 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 Violent Femmes, Color Me Once. Milk Toast Helmet. Uh, slip Slide Belting uh, for Love Not Lisa. After the Flesh, My Life with the Thrill uh, Kill Cult. No. The Jesus and Mary Chain, Snake Driver. Maybe that's it. <laughs> I don't know. There, there's one song on that soundtrack it's is a, amazing. It's a good soundtrack. Well, you're going to have to get back soundtrack. to us, PB. Yeah. I'll have to do some homework. I say, in, uh, use that for your gym next time. Okay, perfect. There you go. By the way, here's that song that I couldn't think I of. I could remember. And, uh... All right, and, and mine this week, I'm going to go with a, uh, a new podcast that came out. It's, I think, maybe five episodes in. It's called Slam Fest, and um, it's a really good podcast. The guy that does it is Brad Rustovin. It's pretty much like... Um, just talking about going to concerts, concerts that he's gone to. And I think he's in the, the mid Midwest area there of the United States. But um, it's cool because actually his his first concert was Kiss Hot in the Shade, which was which was mine. And, and it was cool because he had, um, I think, uh, Slaughter and someone else. Because I, I had Slaughter and Little Caesar, but he had maybe Slaughter and Winger maybe. And, but he goes through the set lists and how, how the, the stage was and how the show was and, like, the pyro and stuff. Then he goes through the, the opening bands and the albums that they had out at the time. Really interesting podcast. So he's a new guy out there. You know, give him a shot. Um, very cool, very interesting podcast. And, um, you know, did, did some White Snake shows. And I think um, this week uh, was a Scorpion show from... See, I said Scorpion's done. Um, <laughs> the Scorpion. Well, Scorpion's the show Scorpions. Um, from... Uh, the uh, whatever the album was after uh, Savage Amusement, like this, it's not coming to me right now. But uh, very cool podcast and uh, Humanity. No, no, that was no, that was way after that. So uh, so check him out, um, Slam Fest podcast. So uh, there's our hidden gems for this week. Joey has enough's enough from the Paraphernalia album, Ain't It Funny. Dylan's got a song from the Crow soundtrack, Pantera, The Badge. BB's got a little. Uh, he's not gonna miss his Robinson's door with Kick Tracy. Checking that out. Mr. Uh, BB, you're trying to seduce me, That's you? right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, BC's got Dream Theater, The Astonished from The Astonishing, Our New World with Lizzie Hale. And I have the Slam Fest podcast with Brad Rustovan. And the uh, concert this week that he talks about is from the Crazy World Tour from Scorpions. So uh, we'll get back into our influences. And uh, BB, you're up to the plate. All right. Um, I'm going to rewind probably 40, 41 years ago. Uh, one of my starting influences had to be my father, almost kind of like Dylan, but he had a great album collection. He had a lot of doo-wop albums um, from like the Dominoes, the Flamingos, the Drifters, the Planters, and he had a lot of early Beatles stuff. So not only the music... But he also taught me how to respect the vinyl, BC. The vinyl. Like, he would he would be doing something. He would put a record on, and he'd kind of walk around the house and do stuff. And I'm, you know, <clears throat> five, six years old. And I'm, like, kind of just, you know, following him around, just watching. And he would throw different albums on. And I'm like, who are these guys, Dad? Oh, well, these are the planters. And, you know. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, all right. So he'd show me the album and, you know, you have to take it out of the here and take it out of the sleeve, <laughs> put it on the on the record player nice. And, you know, you don't want to do this because you could scratch it, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. So really, my beginning, it, it has to be from my father. He would, there were days he would just put on a record. I remember he used to stack. He had a, he had like a doo-wop album there's probably five of them he bought off television and mm -hmm. he would be able to stack them like five high on the on the player that he had and it would go to the one it would drop mm -hmm. and it'd play and he'd just sit there and relax players. and that'd be like like it'd be like the coolest thing i'd watch it and it did a boom it dropped I'm like that's so cool you know so from the doo-wop guys and then then to the early beatles stuff i remember i think it's the uh the red 
album from the Beatles, The Greatest Hits, 1962 like, to 65, 64. Where they're looking down. They're looking down. Yeah. I know there's one a blue cover, but there's a red well, they're cover. They're both looking down. One's yeah. the early and one's later. I think it's, it's definitely the early one because the later one is blue and they're like, yeah. they, they're a little scruffy. <laughs> but the earlier one, Norwegian Wood on that album. Oh, wow. It's just, I can just remember just sitting in our living room and, and just enjoying that song with my dad. No TV, nothing going on. We're just sitting there enjoying music. And so just for that aspect, that is definitely has to be my earliest influence and a great memory. And still to this day, we always, you know, talk Beatles stuff with my dad. Uh, My next influence also has to be another family member, but my two cousins. Uh, Growing up as as an only child, I really didn't have, you know, the older generation to, hey, try this or do this or listen to this. But uh, my cousins for Christmas, they always got me something musical. I remember the first Christmas that I wanted, I wanted, I wanted a, an eight track because I saw my cousin had an eight track player. And of course, I had an, they, for, for Christmas, I had an eight track and the, my my first eight track was double platinum. It was the the and it was almost like that uh, like the dynamite box. It had was like a blue thing with a big speaker on it. it had the the numbers on it, and you click the big handle on it, and you shove the eight track in the side. And uh, just it, it just my cousins were fantastic. They bought me the my first cassette was Pyromania, you know, 1983. You know, that just my cousins just alone. Being such a great influence for, for me, getting me down that that road that that they're they're kind of branding me with 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 all the stuff that they're showing me, so that kind of leads into you know probably everybody at this table on this podcast, Joe included, um, a big influence is Kiss for me definitely. Um, I remember walking into my cousin's room. He had the picture. He had the poster of Farrah Fawcett, and. Every pitch, Kiss picture known to man that was ever in a magazine, he had albums, covers cut and on the wall. And it, it just, as a younger kid, it kind of like, kind of taken me back. Like, who the hell are these guys? Oh, no, listen, listen. And from that day on, just listening to, to that music in my cousin's bedroom with Kiss all over the wall, listening to Kiss, it's like, it is almost like a circus in a way, but... It just, the music just kind of grabbed me. It, it took me in. It really, really made me that little kid that kind of kind of went towards that, that heavier genre of music back in the day. Then probably my, my next influence, probably going chronological, would be Van Halen. And this is, this is the funny part of the podcast that, that I always get dragged into with the Hagar, Van Halen. But my first influence was Jump from, from Van Halen. Watching Eddie play that Frankenstein guitar on MTV, when I first heard that song, I'm like, wow, that, that guitar is just crazy. Like, who is that guy? You know, and I've never heard anything else from them. And seeing him on MTV, the design of that guitar just kind of really sucked me in because I remember for the next, for the next Halloween, I had Peter Chris makeup on. I had a flying V that I made out of cardboard in in fish fish um, fish uh, string yeah um, fishing wire fi- what do you fishing line. line fishing line yeah <laughs> um, and, and and I made and I made the the Frankenstein design on this flying V cardboard guitar like I was I was like a mess I think it was like sixth sixth grade for Halloween Peter Chris don't play guitar Peter Peter <laughs> Chris with 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 an Eddie Van Halen flying V guitar. You know, like, like a dude from Trick or Treat. Like talk talk about like a big humongous mess, you know. But uh, that just stuck in my head. Just that design itself, and then going forward with with Van Halen from 1984, and then they break up. You read about it in Circus Magazine, you know. Then they then they bring Sammy in with the the synths and all this other stuff. The way they went down, and I always get the harassment, like I said. But I love both. I love both Van Halens. It, it, some. Some people can't stand one. Some people can't stand the other. I enjoy both equally. Like they, they, them to me, finding Van Halen in 1984, it is, it, you're in that bad window almost, you know? Like, wow, this, 
1984 front to back's an amazing album. Then all of a sudden, like he's gone and this other guy's in there. You don't know who he is, you know, because the, the internet's not there. You're just kind of reading, reading from circus. But uh, I always thought like 5150 was a fantastic album, just as good as 1984, and it's you know two different lead singers and a totally different avenue they went down. Definitely Van Halen is is is, is it has to be a big influence. And probably my, my last influence has to be you two knuckleheads. Because you, you guys, from going to the KISS Expos, to M3, <laughs> to all these different concerts, I'm like the little kid in the back seat, they'd be like, BB, who sings this? Um, the Scream? Yeah! It'd be like, hey, BB, who sings this? Uh, the Union? Yeah! And, just, and, and it, it always, you guys kind of definitely brought that you know, Kick Tracy, you know, perfect example, my hidden gem. You know, if BC never said Kick Tracy the one time we went to an expo, I would have never know what Kick Tracy is. So you, you kind of search, you kind of do this, you go on Amazon, you get a CD or whatever, you just go like suck it in there, put the headphones on and rock all, these guys are really good. And it's just definitely, you know, probably from 90 to now, you, you two have probably been like the most influential the way, you know, we were to Dylan. You know, it just... Bringing that '80s music, you know that that window from like '83 to, you know '89 that those bands had only released like one album that I never heard of that you guys knew of. It just kind of it broadened my my library of music, and it just you know it just kept growing and growing and growing. And still to this day, you know there's certain bands I'm like, oh wow, I never knew they had this album. And boom, you put it on your phone, you listen to it. Like the old music from 1983 is new music today. So definitely, you know, last but not least, you two knuckleheads are definitely a, a big influence on my 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 music. I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> 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 All right, very cool. How about you, BC? Oh, God. I mean, I'm gonna, not my mother, but uh, I'm going to say uh, Judy was going to nursing school, so she would have study groups. So I was... Young back then, maybe seven, eight years old, eight years old, say. And all these guys are much older than uh, than me. And I remember just going in this basement of my mom's friend's house, and they're listening to Kiss. So I mean, of course, I'm like, I'm not saying nothing because I don't, I barely know these kids. <coughs> they're older than me. I'm just like, they're like, hey, you ever listen to Kiss? I'm like, oh no, <laughs> this is pretty much the first. And I remember playing all these Kiss albums and. He hands me, it's funny you guys were talking about before, Kiss Live too. And again, I'm a kid and I'm just opening it up like and I remember that the gatefold and oh. that stage and the fire and I was like and then like after that I was nagging my mom all the time, can we go can we can I I want L I want L Can we go to Ames? Can we go to Ames? Ames is the story you always went to. So I mean these, these kids were uh, so they get together every so often, so one night I go and they're gonna you ever hear Black Sabbath? I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so they put on, like, Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath. The, the ring. <sighs> like Dylan was saying, when he was a kid hearing stuff, I mean, but to me, they're playing this music. I'm like, and then my head, I'm going, what the hell is this? It's, it, was, it was scared the shit out of me, I guess you would say. I'm younger than these guys. I'm like, oh, you know, very evil music. But these, I didn't even know their names, Scott Love, and they're out there again. But they're much older than me, and. They planted the seed of this hard rock music, whatever you want to call it, Emmy. So Judy graduated, started working, so there was no more groups together, and I never saw these kids ever again, but it was implanted in me, and I guess the next influence would be magazines, like Circus back then. I don't think Metal Edge is out. This is going back. It was Circus, and was it Cream? Was that out back then? Cream was out. Cream, yeah. um, the, hip Raider. So I would go to Shaw's. I would go to Shaw's and just want to get magazines so I can see what's coming up. And of course, like I got into Maiden, like Death Leopard, and uh, on the trail into that first story, like Cheap Trick. I mean, was, I used to go to the diner on Route Six. They had the, the jukebox, jukebox where you turn yeah. out. I used to put quarters in there like crazy. You just play all these songs by bands I never heard of just to hear them. Anyways, going back. And, I'm getting older now, saying that 12, 13 now, and Motley Crue came out. And I'm like, this is almost like my kiss. Because Kiss was already out when I was introduced oh, yeah. to Kiss, and here comes Motley Crue coming out, and they have that makeup kind of look, and it was just this. Yeah, and I jumped on this crew wagon, I guess you could say, because this is my kiss. 
Like those older guys introduced me to Kiss, but this is going to be my Kiss. And I introduced yeah. it to BB. Yes. Anyways, and then the 80s came, and then we used to hang out with this group of kids, and I don't even know who this kid was. He rode a bike, and he just had hair down. He was like a hair. Was it Weedrow? I don't know. From he, down on 10th Avenue? But he was, he was a Metallica head. This guy was always he, like he was, a, he was more of a burnout. Nah, this guy was like, eh, Metallica, man. You guys got yeah. You listen to that shit. Listen to Metallica. Listen to Metallica. I'm like Metallica. What the hell is Metallica? What the hell is so Metallica? So of course I go out and buy uh, and uh, uh, the four, now they're 45 with this the 12 inch with jumping the fire and can we go on? Fan, fan alert, man. I don't know. It's three one song on one side, two on the other side. And the I remember 12 inch singles. I remember playing this. I'm like. And it was it was different than say the, the maidens and not so much but the crews and the leopards it was it was more <laughs> real fast more intense. Right. So I remember that guy got love for whoever he was. <laughs> was it jump of the fire and then Phantom Lord and seek and destroy? Yes, yes, thank you. Come on. And now I, I take in my my friends go hey check these guys out and and that's where I got into like Megadeth and that just all grew into me. So many years later. I'm always on the hunt for new shit. And, uh, I want to say it was mid '90s. You have to remember this, Steve, because I was like, then I, I discovered this band, Dream Theater, and oh, yeah. uh, pulled me under. And I kept going to Steve. You gotta check out this band. Pull me under. And he's he's like, still trying to get me to listen. I'm to still them. trying to get him to listen to him. But God I love him. <laughs> and I just like jumped on these guys until this very day. Love them. And then uh, as time went by, I mean. I like acoustic music. BB, I know oh, he likes right. acoustic yes. music. So uh, I'm always looking, looking. I found his band. I want to say they're from New York. I could be wrong. Mr. Real- Mr. Reality, they were called. And they did a whole album just all acoustic. It was three guys. And to me, mm. to this very day, is one of my favorite albums. Throw it on. It just wow. all acoustic, nothing electric on it. And uh, my final thing is me, my age. As I got older now, I'm, I'm branching out into a lot of different, let's say back in the day, you're like, oh, I really don't like that. I think Joey mentioned like More Rick, open-minded. Rick Springfield oh. and like 80, 80 stuff. There was a lot of good music back in the 80s. I was more on the harder side back in the day when you're younger and that. But now as you, you're older, you look back and you really get into uh, open your, not your eyes to new music because you only knew it. You just, your ears are more mature now and you... You can really totally enjoy it where you did it in the past. Yeah. Right. That is true. So I guess media would be my biggest influence after the, those first guys right. planted the seed. All right. Very cool. Um, for me, the earliest thing I can remember is my um, at, at my house, my you know, where I grew up. And I my, my parents had a bunch of albums, but the one I really remember seeing is um, – the Elvis album, Live Via Satellite, Aloha, Hawaii, or whatever, it, it um, came out in 1973. I remember putting that on, and I was like, holy crap, what, what is this? And I really liked Elvis's voice. And, and actually, I listened to this today on Apple Music, and I was like, it took me right back to sitting in my parents' bedroom with that album on the on the player and looking at the uh, looking at the, the album cover and you know just like checking it out and and that was like you know had Hound Dog on there and like even the Mellower songs and I listened to it today put me right back there but like you know you, you didn't really listen to music then how you do now but I listened to it today and like that band his band was friggin tight and. Uh, and it seems like on that album, like he went off on a couple things, and like the band just like kept right up with him, and and it was really cool. So that took me back, like the the Elvis Live via Satellite Aloha Hawaii, um, that was like my my very first like rock thing that I remember. Um, early on, like my my mom had Barry Manilow albums, and um and and I've said it before on this podcast, Barry Manilow is the fucking man. Uh, this, this dude has has fucking made more wet panties out there than fucking Ron <laughs> Jeremy, um, <laughs> for sure. I mean, this guy, you know, he knew his audience, but like the music is good, you know. Although when he sings, you know, I write the songs, he didn't write that song, which is mm. which is kind of weird. <laughs> but um, <laughs> he, he's, I mean, just a phenomenal entertainer, and I think that had a lot of influence on the the melodic stuff that I like, the the hooks, the the harmonies, the you know the the, the different stuff that you know you hear out there. I, I really like that. I think that had a lot of influence on, on what I like uh, melodic wise. 
and um, and I have to say, uh, probably the summer of 1977, we went to California to visit my cousins. Of course, I you know I was into Kiss at the time, and actually I'll go back to that because I, I kind of skipped ahead. Um, you know, I had a couple Kiss albums at the time, but obviously I couldn't take them on the airplane with me to California as uh, you know a, a nine year old. So when I you know when I got out there, my cousin had a a, a thing of albums, and I remember putting on uh, Sticks Grand Illusion. I was like, "What is this?" I mean, it's like the first stuff that I re- you know you know the radio was on and, and stuff like that. You hear songs in that that I can remember and go back and hear like stuff from Wings and. Uh, you know the Beatles and like a lot of the 70s stuff but this was the first time I actually you know had an album of someone that was modern at the time besides Kiss and I just remember hearing that dun, 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 and like the keyboards and just the the big sound of that album and to this day it's probably probably my favorite album uh, in top five of all time Six Grand Illusion not a skip around there for me and, and that actually had an influence on the progressive music that I like now, like the, uh, you know, like the, the Mark's Project Gemini stuff, the like some of the Yes stuff, um, you know, like I said, more sticks and like more of the progressive type music. That's I think that's really what influenced me to, you know, branch out besides Kiss. That was like the first thing besides them that I listened to. And then I went down the record thing a little further. Frampton Comes Alive was there. I'm like, well, all right, let me try this. This guy, you know, it double gate folds out and here's the you know the whole big thing of the guy with the with the les paul i didn't know what the fuck the les paul was then but you know i put it on and i'm like all right this is cool you know starts out i think uh something's happening i think is the first song on there and then when doobie walk comes i'm like wow this song has got a cool feel to it but then when boom do you feel like we do come on i'm like that song was like holy shit and i'm like that song with the talk box and the the, the mellower part with the keyboards and the talk box and talking and the jam at the end. And I think that really had a big influence on the stuff that I like now, like the, the epic Iron Maiden songs that are, you know, 10 to 13 minutes long or, you know, 18 minutes long, however long um, Empire of the Clouds is. I think that had the influence on me. You know, a lot of people don't have patience to listen to those longer songs. You know, they're like, you know, like Stephen Michael, for example. Stephen, I love you, buddy. Like, he's like, give me, a, you know, three, four-minute song, I'm good. Like, I like when bands stretch out stuff, and I think that was my main influence in that, you know, and um, and that was a big one. But I will jump back, and I've said this many times in the show. Uh, my, my buddy Shane Perrigan, his brother J.D. Perrigan, first Kiss fan I ever met. We were in his snooping in his bedroom, going through his shit. Got Kiss Destroyer, was looking at it. Um put it on what the hell is this he come in barged in i thought he was going to beat the shit out of us he's like oh you like that and i'm like yeah i mean i mean this kid was you know when we you're you're younger your 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 friends older siblings are you know you're a little afraid of him but this he was like a badass motorcycle guy i'm like he's gonna kick the shit out of me like right in this bedroom (laughs) and he was like cool he's like hey i'll make a copy of it for you and you know and i i you know put that needle down like before you come in there and you hear all the stuff in the beginning of detroit rock city and when them you know that down and on and kicks in like my life had changed right there it was like i i hadn't listened to that ellis album for probably 20 years after i first listened to that first kiss album and and it's still i still have a soft spot for a destroyer it's not my favorite kiss album but it i still you know have a soft spot for that album absolutely love it and um, one thing that I really enjoyed and it had uh, a, a big impact on me was the show Hee Haw. Love that show. My grandparents, my parents used to go out Saturday nights and my grandparents would watch us. You know, we had to sit through fucking Lawrence Welk because it was on right before Hee Haw. So that was like <laughs> fucking painful with the bubble machine. And one and a two and a... But then when Hee Haw came on, like I was watching that show and I'm like, oh my God, these girls are so pretty. Like... You know, you didn't think, you know, you're young. You don't think of a term, man, she's hot, like, the, you know, throw a jump into her or anything like that. But I'm like, oh, my God, these girls are really pretty. And then, but, like, when, when Buck Owens and Roy Clark did that picking and grinning, I'm like, oh, my God, these guys, like, are, are great playing guitar. And, you know, Johnny Cash was on it. They had a lot of, uh, 
different uh, Merle Haggard and all these country stars were on that show over the years. And, you know, I could still sing the gloom despair is agony on me. Whoa. <laughs> I, I, I love that. And, and I will go back and watch that on YouTube, the parts from that show. It had really had a big influence on me musically, even though I never really branched out into country music, which is, which is totally fine with me. And as far as movies go, Coal Miner's Daughter, Sissy Spacek, Tommy Lee Jones, um, you know, picks this young girl up from this, you know, this mining town, and she's, you know, turned out to be one of the biggest country stars, like, in the world, like, ever. And it was just such a cool movie, and that's what got me to, like, uh, you know, these these rock bio movies, like like Dylan said, like, uh, Almost Famous, and uh, one of the best ones, I think, was Ray, uh, for the movie about Ray Charles. That was a fucking amazing movie. I love watching stuff like that. Even up to this time, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody with Queen and, um, you know, even The Dirt with Motley Crue, which, you know, very, very loosely, you know, on these guys. But it's it's interesting to watch. And I love when they show the stuff of the, the bands in the studio making the music and how these guys got together, even though, you know, it's not all exactly how it happened. But it is cool to see that type of stuff. Joey, you mentioned uh, the the Grease movie. Um, absolutely, I talked about that a little bit. That was a, a huge one. And and Dylan, you talked about the other musicals. Like I like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang is one of my favorite movies of all time. I fucking love that movie. Another it's Dick fantastic. Van Dyke movie. I know, fantastic. And from Mary Poppins, Step in Time. Oh no, was that? Yeah, yeah, from Step in Time, from that one. And the old bamboo. Is and the old it? bamboo is from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And the one that they do on Family Guy. Stewie yeah, does it in the, the park. The the uh, he does it's about the, weed. The bag of weed. Yeah. The bag of weed. The bag of weed. A bag of weed. You got <laughs> Fucking hilarious, but um, just um, fantastic. In in that summer seventy seven. Also, first time I heard Aerosmith, "Get Your Wings," and still my favorite Aerosmith album. People say rocks. I always go to "Get Your Wings." So um, that's pretty much my thing there. And you know, eighties TV had a big impact. Shows like Miami Vice. Um, they had a lot of cool music, and, and I, I love that pop stuff as well, Joey, in the 80s. And, you know, my wife even is surprised sometimes. I'll be like, yeah, we're going somewhere. Like, yeah, put on 80s on 8. And then, because actually, we went to New York the other day. She's like, I'm surprised you left that on. I'm like, I, I dabble in that stuff. I like it. It's, it's catchy. <laughs> Some of the stuff is, is, is not good, but a lot of it is just, it's, it's good stuff. And, and they're, the, the songs are still being played these days for a reason because they're, they're good. You know, they, they are. So that's uh, that's pretty much what I got. So, uh, Joey, what do you think about ours? I mean, I, it's so funny. It, it, it's so great to hear other people's not only influences, but just their, their growing up with music and how they progressed. And, you know, from, you know, from BB saying the stuff about Van Halen 1984 and then hearing, you know, uh, Sammy Hagar take over in 1985. It's so funny that I was I was the same way with that stuff too because I actually love 5150 might be my favorite Van Halen record, but you're so right. You're like you're almost torn back then, you know, especially when you're at certain ages it it, it's, it hits you and you're like, "Oh my god, I don't know what to think now." And you know, the stuff with the <laughs> the cardboard guitar and all that stuff. <laughs> so so much fun. I, I it brings back so many memories like you said even of my childhood, you know, making cardboard guitars and drum sets and pretending, you know, putting on fake concerts. And I love hearing all of that stuff, you know, and then, you know, BC talked about magazines. I can't believe I forgot magazines, magazines. What a huge influence. I, to, I it had to been on all of us. I mean, it's, because that was the only place you could get any information. Mm-hmm. I mean, very rarely you would listen to a radio and you'd hear, maybe an advertisement oh kisses then you know kiss see kiss live you know next month whatever but very rarely because you'd have to catch it at the exact time where where magazines were the only thing besides you know vinyl sleeves and vinyl jackets that you could sit and just stare and read about your favorite bands magazines were so important i I, i'm mad that i missed that one (laughs) and then steve of course you too you know from elvis starting with elvis and Elton John and, you know, all that stuff, uh, you know, all of that stuff is major, major influences on me as well. I, I didn't put it in the top five just because I had to limit it. But Elton John, Billy Joel, um, Frampton Comes Alive. I mean, all of that stuff is such it had to have influenced almost anyone that likes 
rock music today, especially Kiss fans. I think we all kind of have that same background. All right, cool. Definitely. I'm done. Uh, really good influences from everybody. Something that I could relate to uh, from everyone, I think. Uh, BB Norwegian Wood. I had a huge Beatles phase, and uh, I listened to the album Rubber Soul, which that's originally from quite a bit, because that was right before... That's That was right as they were teetering on the middle of their career where they started going into the psychedelic stuff because Revolver was next, and that, that really d- dove headfirst into the... Yeah, the spiritual acid Beatles. Beatles. <laughs> uh, but it's a really good album. That I think uh, Andrew Bird can sing is on that album too, and that's a great song. Drive my car, beep beep Ooh. beep beep. Yeah, <laughs> uh, really really good album. Uh, BC Jump of the Fire, fantastic. Uh, I uh, and it's funny because recently I saw a T-shirt. Uh, uh, it's a Hollow Notes Man Eater, and it's the the demon on the cover of the Jump of the Fire single, oh, yeah. but with like. A bra and panties, and like it's eating a man. <laughs> and the it's like hollowed oats in the Metallica font, <laughs> man eater. Uh, it's a, actually hold on, let me see if I can pull up the T-shirt real quick. I would love to be able to find that record. Yeah, there's the there's the T-shirt. You could probably make a payment on your house with it if you bought it. Oh, good. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Dad, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, I remember when we were in Nashville, we were. Spent a good portion of that time looking for the vinyl of Aloha from Hawaii. That was a mm-hmm. very, very important uh, journey that we Finally got it. we did. Uh, do you feel like we do? Frampton was my first concert that I ever went to. So that that's really uh, an important song that's near and dear to my heart. And, of course, you know, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and Mary Poppins were two musicals that were constantly played in the house. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really cool hearing everybody's influences and how you got to be where you are. <laughs> Cool, BB. Uh, yeah, definitely BC. When when you were when you were talking about Motley Crue, um, it kind of the light switch went on. I, I remember my neighbor across the street. He bought the uh, Shout the Devil album, and he had the one with the the pentagram on it. Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Oh wow, this must this must be really bad because that means like it's like has something to do with the devil and stuff." So he <laughs> bought it. And we get home and play it, and it's like in the beginning, you're like, <laughs> then it's like shout the get shout the devil. I'm like. <laughs> Well, because I, I can just picture mm-hmm. myself exactly where I was in that in in my neighbor's bedroom when we First listened to that day. album. I'm like, <gasps> holy shit, that's just it's just crazy how like, boom, like that. You're like, boom, you're right back there. And uh, in in Steve's story, uh, it, I love the hee haw because I remember my parents used to watch hee-haw, that all the Lawrence time Welk. too. Mm-hmm. Lawrence, to, yeah, my Lawrence grandmother Welk used like to people. watch Lawrence Welk yeah. all the time, and the bubbles would be flying, <laughs> and she'd be over kind of moving in her little apartment, dancing around, and I'd be sitting there. Yeah, and mm. even even Donnie and Marie back then, when that show oh, was yeah. on the, the air. Osmonds, yeah, you know, sure. I, um, I'm a little bit country, I'm a little bit rock and roll. But at least he all had guitars. They did. Lawrence Welk was there. No, Lawrence Welk was all uh, Walt's shit. <laughs> yeah, definitely two great stories. And it just how it just machine, brings though. up. Oh yeah, the bubble machine. Yeah, but uh, it's just great how it just you know you talk about certain things and just think <laughs> certain things just pop in your head. You're like, oh yeah, but uh, love it. Yeah, uh, since we have Joey on, I'm gonna go back to uh, one of my favorite ZO2 memories. Uh, me and uh, one of the guys I work with, uh, we're Buffalo Bills fans. I know we're going to get abuse here. But uh, we used to go to a game every year. we pick a home game to go every year. And I want to say it was like probably 2009-ish. The Bills would do a home game in Toronto, Canada. And we said, hey, let's do let's go to Toronto, Canada this year. I'm like, oh, okay. So in the meantime, I just got a, a Jeep Laredo off a friend of ours. Steve's brother-in-law, actually. And... Uh, here we are going up to the border, and we're all ready to go. Okay, it's going to be, we're going up, f- like, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're going to have a great time. So here we get to the border. Oh, what are you guys doing? Uh, going to a football game. Oh, okay, and then he's some other things. They go, okay. Two other people come up there, look at the car, they ask more questions. And they said, oh, can you guys pull over to the side? So we pull over to the side, and the guy I'm with is a nervous wreck to begin with, let alone when the uh, Authority is in, involved with this. <laughs> so we pull it up, up, and he goes, what's going on? I said, I don't know. Oh, you know. There's nothing in the car, right? So they, a lady and a guy come out from this building, and they ask us more questions, like, where are you going? What are you doing? You know, da, 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 da. So we're like, oh, shit. So they asked us to get out of the vehicle and go over and sit on the bench. 
So we got a vehicle, send the bench, boom, they, they pull the hatch back up, they're pulling our luggage out. Now the guy I'm with is sh- shitting bricks. <laughs> and I'm laughing, going, I hope they don't find a knife. He's like, what the fuck you mean nice? I said, well, it's, da- <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's a Damien's car. I said, he probably, he probably forgot a knife or two in there. You're kidding me. You're kidding me. I said, well, we're going to find out. <laughs> so boom, boom, they're going to the car. It's poor thing out there. And the lady comes over. She goes, why do you have the so-and-so of spades? And I'm looking at her like, what are you talking about? Because I have no idea. I have the Casino Logic CD, and inside the CD was uh, each of you guys had a, a card with your pictures on it. And I put it up in the sunglass little container thing on the the roof there. Uh, I forgot all about it because every time we put the CD, it would fall out, so I, I shoved it up there. You got you have a card in there, and what what does this mean? I'm like, what card are you talking? I'm like, what are you talking about? A card? I had no idea. I totally forgot about putting it up there. And I'm getting aggravated. And I'm like, what the hell? So now they call us into the building. And they're going, okay, uh, more questions. I'm going, I mean, and now I'm to the point, like, what the fuck's going on? Just get it over with, you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, they were looking for a Brian Chapman from Jamaica was the, the whole deal. <laughs> and if you know me, I'm, I'm Irish. I'm white skin. I'm You're really right. not from Jamaica. And the guy goes, oh, sorry, you know, your name matched the person we're looking for, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, holy shit, what the hell? So, like, we're leaving, and the guy with me is so nervous. I'm like, I'm like hey, we're going there. Like, he said, okay, have a good trip. And I'm like, okay. I said, thank you, man. <laughs> going out the door. But, I mean, that was the funniest I can't, thing. I can't believe the playing cards is what got you in trouble. Yeah. All the Z, again, we're, we have, Kiss was always our biggest, uh, fav- most favorite band. So all of our CDs, we'd love to give away you know, little inserts, much like, you know, Kiss would do back in the day. So, you know, we would have tattoos in some of the CDs. We had <laughs> yep. a calendar in one of the CDs. And this this album, Casino Logic, that we did, we literally had playing cards. And there were all different playing cards you could you could get. So, you know, you would have to buy multiple copies of, of the CD the to try to get, you know, the full set of playing cards. I can't believe that the Canadian border <laughs> stopped you because of it. Unbelievable. What does Great ZO2 story. mean? What does ZO2 mean? No, but they said, uh, you got the spades of what he called it. What, what is it? I'm like, and I forgot all about the card being there. I'm like, what right. are you talking about? You're lucky you didn't get the fucking body cavity search. Oof. That was probably coming next. <laughs> they snapped the rubber glove. You know you're fucked. <laughs> yeah, that was that was one of the funniest things. Sir. You can talk about mine and BB stuff, too, if you want. <clears throat> BB's list, of course. I mean, I start with Steve because you're the Lawrence Welk, the Hee Haw. That was like my grandmother. She watched Lawrence Welk religiously, and then Hee Haw, and I was just happened to be there. And you would you absorb it. You absorb it through just being there. But at least Hee Haw had guitars in it, and pretty gross. I mean, back then, like you said, you didn't really look at them like you would now, right. or even at teenage year. But that, that's funny bringing that back. BB, same thing with records. The record player dropping. I mean, uh, yeah. Judy had one, to, and that was the biggest thing. You used to, if you're out, if you went to church, say it's Sunday, you would come home. You want to listen to records? He put it on, and that was the biggest thing. Is yeah. the record players and now? Let me ask you: Did she ever shows. accidentally put on side A of Love Gun? And I Stole Your Love comes blasted through the. Do you know? You know. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> but if you watch that movie, they fucked up. <laughs> because when she puts that album on, she it's the side the, with Love Gun. It's a Love Gun mm-hmm. side. Yeah. And then when the music starts, it's I Stole Your Love. Yep. Referencing Detroit Rock City. Are you listening to Kiss? <laughs> <laughs> the devil's music. The devil's music. All right, cool. Yeah. BC's list. The, uh, you know, the, the older kids and stuff like that. And the thing with me was, I mean, like a lot of people, um, I know I know Joey's uh, older brother influenced him to a certain point And, you know, for the music he listens to, like my brother was never a, a big music. He's more of a hits guy. So I didn't really have that. Um, but it was cool that BC had, you know, those older kids. And it, but, but and like you can't you said, even know who they are. No, but like you said, you, you hear a kiss? Oh, uh, no. Like, yeah. You didn't want to say nothing because they're older than you. You don't know them. They're bigger than you. So, of course, you're like, uh, intimidation. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, um, I mean, that was that was very cool. And and I'm with Joey, too. Magazines. I totally forgot about friggin' magazines. Um, and, you know, we used to go to the same spots. Charles, we were probably in the store at the same time at some point. <laughs> you know, we didn't really know each other at the time. Um, and that was – and actually, 
I think it was Hip Raider. Um, that's how I first discovered Judas Priest. And um, they were talking about Unleashed in the East. And that's when I, when I, that was the first album I picked up because I remember them um, talking about, in the interview, talking about Rob Halford riding, riding the Harley on stage. And he's like, you know, maybe someday I'll ride a snowplow on stage. And I'm like, oh, these guys must be pretty cool. So I picked up Unleashed in the East. <laughs> fucking awesome. Um, BB, the the records, and, and, and I got to bring it up too, the record player where the, you could stack the records. Um, every night, you know, when, when we were growing up, me and my brother, you know, he'd have some albums, I'd have some albums, and we'd, you know, he'd, like one night I would get to put the first album on, and the next night he'd put the first album on, we'd stack like four albums and, and just let it play off, and, and you'd go to bed, and it would automatically shut off when you're done. Like now, with the turntables you get, it's just... You got to get up when the side's over and move the fucking needle, you know? But, like, that was cool back in the day. The albums would just drop, you know? Like, you'd, you'd, one night you'd play, like, you know, side two, side three, and, you know, and the next night flip them over. And, and actually, if you look at, um, and I noticed that on Rush, All the World's a Stage, side one and side four are on the same disc, on the same album, and side two and three are on the same one. So you could play... So if you're gonna do that, you, you can do put, one, you oh, can yeah. play side one and then side two would drop next, hmm. and then if you flip them over, side three and then side four would drop next. If you had a player like that, oh. so it was very cool. Um, and, and Ed with the Beatles and stuff like that. I'm a, I'm a hits Beatles guy, you know. I can go with that, and, and, I, and I totally understand you with the with the Van Halen thing. And I don't um, hate Sammy Hagar with Van Halen. There's a lot of stuff that I like. It's good, but I do prefer Dave. Just very cool. Go ahead, mm -hmm. no. Uh, you actually reminded me uh, when you're talking about magazines because magazines was also kind of an influence on me too because whenever we would go to, to Borders because I would always demand whenever we were going shopping I would want to go to the bookstore. Almost nobody else wants wanted to go with me. But every time I would go I would I see... Went. Yeah, you did. I would. Uh, I would see Classic Rock Magazine. And Classic Rock Magazine, it's a UK import and they always had a sample disc. Sometimes yeah. it was... Like a covers out, like a covers album of different artists doing a tribute to a band. Um, other times, the one time they had the full album from The Answer, Demon Eyes, on there, and that's how I got into The Answer was hmm. through that magazine. So magazines are even today still. <laughs> it's funny awesome. yeah. talking about a circus magazine. Get on Facebook, punch that in. People have already circus magazines. A bunch of different ones come up, and they, they're selling them for crazy money. <laughs> that's really. Cool. All right, very cool. Um, th now, all right, did everybody go? I believe so. Okay. All right, because I don't want to mess it up again. All right, so, guys, um, let us out there know what what your influences are. You know, bring them up, and we'll, you know, we could even talk about them when you guys, you know, if, if you if you resonated with something that one of us talked about, you know, let us know. Interact with us. Let us know on that. And what we'll do now is we'll go around the table, and everybody can say their goodbyes. We'll let Joey plug his book and everything, and uh, we will wrap up. So, um, Dylan, go ahead. First off, thanks, Joey, for coming on. It was a pleasure to, to talk with you and have you on the show. Uh, you have some awesome influences, and uh, we were really happy to have you on, for sure. I uh, I think this was a cool episode. I, I really enjoyed hearing where everybody came from, their their origin story almost. We hear bits and pieces where we get our influences from on the podcast throughout, but it was cool to get a definitive, this is what I think defined how I got into music and it's just a really fascinating look into to each and every one of us and I'm really happy that we got to do this kind of episode and I think we'll have a Spotify playlist of the week featuring some of the the influences that we had that we listed maybe some musical stuff um, definitely some Kiss since everybody mentioned Kiss for the most part uh, there will be some some cool stuff I think that we could put on the Spotify playlist of the week for sure yeah, definitely, Joey. Thanks for coming on. You know, it's great talking with you uh, finally after we, you know, actually got you on here. But uh, this is just great how everybody has, like, that foundation of music, how you, you know, from Hee Haw or Elvis to, you know, me with the, the doo-wop guys. It's just great how, everybody, how you just see, like, everybody's story kind of evolve, how you go from little that and then we're all of us all of our roads almost pretty much cross at some point mm -hmm. and just great to see different ages different you know musical taste but somewhere the five of us cross in a in in some kind of of path in this this musical journey that we're all on and it's just a great 
great story that we, we all told, you know, definitely bringing back crazy memories. Um, just fantastic. You know, I, I hope everybody out there kind of interacts with us because, you know, I, I love reading, you know, certain stories that people have out there just to how they, you know, even how they got to listen to Kiss, their first album. You know, who knows? Maybe it's a, their first album, maybe like Unmasked or something, you know. You know, mine was double platinum, and I never knew double platinum was a was a greatest hit greatest for hits. who knows how long. <laughs> but uh, just a great episode and great talking with you guys about you know where you guys got your influences from. It's just a fantastic topic. Again, uh, great having you on, Joey. I mean, I got to tell my story of the CO two uh, Canadian <laughs> border incident. And uh, I love watching all your stuff on Facebook. I mean, uh, the thing that sticks out the most is you and your daughter playing the drums. I think that's so cool. But uh, this is a great episode. I mean, it's so fun hearing our stories and Dylan's age group stories of how we all got into what we got into, this crazy thing called rock and roll. And it's, it, it, and there's so many things that people talking here that trigger more memories as I'm sitting here like, oh, shit, yeah, the record player. And hee haw. I mean, the fuck, I can remember Saturday nights, hee haw. That was the big fucking thing. But uh, totally another great fun episode. Excellent. Uh, Joey, go ahead, my friend. So, first, guys, absolutely thank you so much for having me on. I'm a big fan of the show. Love listening to you guys. You're always funny to, to listen to. Again, it's not just about the topic, it's about your interaction. That's what makes a good podcast, and that's what's always fun about you guys. But this actually was a good topic tonight. This was so much fun. You know, when Steve was telling me about the topic, I almost didn't grasp it at first. But now, you know, now I went through my list and you guys all went through your list. It really is amazing how not only all our all of our influences are so different, but we do cross. We do have that that kiss cross stream, you know, we like in Ghostbusters, the, the streams are crossing right at the kiss, <laughs> the kiss camp. You know what I mean? So it's it's such a pleasure to hear everyone's backstories and what got them influenced in music and you know passionate about something like that. So it, thank you again so much for having me on. All your listeners, if you want to read more about me, my my autobiography, like I said, is available on Amazon.com right now. It's called Start with a Dream: A Drummer's Journey from Rock and Roll to TV to Broadway. It's all about me growing up a Kiss fan and then eventually touring with Kiss and having my own TV show, show called Z Rock. It's it's just a feel good '80s nostalgia book. It's it's a growing up in that time period, and and if you grew up in that time period, I guarantee you you will relate to a lot of it. I also quickly another plug. I have my new show that's on Amazon Prime right now. It's available. It's called Wrestling with Joey Licious. You can type in just Joey Licious on Amazon Prime, and it should pop up. There's five short episodes up there right now. Hopefully, Amazon will be ordering more. And you guys will get a full season eventually you, as soon as this uh, virus craziness calms down. But again, guys, thanks so much for having me. All right. Thank you, Joey, very much. Um, thank you. We much appreciate you, you know, spending, taking time on. I know you're I know you're a busy guy. Even with this stuff going on, I, I know you're crazy busy. And, um, you know, we appreciate you you coming on here. And, and, I'm, and like I said before, I, I can't believe we haven't done an episode like this before. We've been doing this for almost three years, I think close yeah. to it or something like that and we haven't done this yet and i'm glad that we we're able to do it with you especially after listening and reading uh listening to and reading your book just like and, and like we talked about that in the interview with like how like a lot of the stuff that you know you did and went through was like kind of parallel with you know with a lot of shit that i did you know except for being an, an awesome professional musician obviously but um it, it was it, it's always fun having you on I, I love listening to you when you're on with tom and zeus and when you're on podcast rock city it's always great hearing you on there and uh bust an ass with those guys uh two great podcasts just fantastic um you you've been on growing up rock i believe with uh with steven and sonny as well um just a, a great guy and you know thank you for spending the time with us and yeah you guys check out wrestling with joey licious the episodes are funny as hell they're they're only short episodes too they're like five six minutes but you know if if you're like like the old school wrestling rowdy guys, rowdy piper yeah I, i'm here to i'm here to chew gum and kick ass <laughs> just like funny as hell like great um, I, I love the the part with the, with the priest that's friggin hilarious i just love how you <laughs> Uh, you get, watch it. Just, just you guys watch it. It'll take you. 
probably 20 minutes to watch all of them. It's 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 well worth the time and um, and give Joey a good review on there because that helps Amazon know that uh, people are watching it and that they want more. And I, I have to actually do my reviews as well. Um, and uh, it was a great topic today. It it was fun and and like I, I don't even know who said it. Um, that you know, when you hear other people's things, it triggers more of like, oh mm-hmm. yeah, you know, that was you know something for me as well. And it, it's always cool to hear that. And and I like just the the conversation. Uh, it it just it you know it folds so well because it's I mean, it, hey, if we weren't passionate about our music, we wouldn't be doing this. And it's cool to you know kind of delve a little deeper into like how you have that passion and why you have that passion. And you know and. And there's a lot of great music out there now still. Um, I, I hope that there's some younger listeners out there and, you know, that some of the stuff we talked about, some of the bands, the older stuff, maybe you'll check them out. And, you know, maybe that could, you know, give you a stepping stone to check out other stuff. It, like everything is, it just, I think it just builds. Like everything that everybody talked about, it, it just steps you into another realm of, you know, what you listen to, what you like. So, um, like I said, let us know what you what you guys think. Um Dylan said there'll be a Spotify playlist. We'll t- uh, there'll be a lot of cool stuff, uh, you know. And it actually, it will be a, a kind of a different playlist from what we usually have on there. So it'll be a little more diverse with, uh, you know, some older stuff and newer stuff. So it'll be cool. Maybe you could find uh, BB's Pantera song on there. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so once again, Joey, thank you for joining us. Uh, it was a pleasure. We will absolutely have you back. Great guest. Um, and uh, you know, good luck with with the, the book and the jo- wrestling with Joey Licious. And uh, you guys check out check out Joey on YouTube. He has all the the Z Rock shows on there. If you want to laugh your ass off, I swear to God, watch that. You will be you'll be laughing your balls <laughs> off watching that show. It is fucking hilarious. <laughs> um, so uh, and check out ZO2. You know, um, buy that forty dollars CD on Amazon. <laughs> You know, for sure. And actually, it, Joey, it says on there there's only two left of Casino Logic, Uh-oh. by the way. So, well, uh, order them directly from me then. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. And uh, and Dylan will put a link to, uh, like, Joey's stuff on the bottom of the, you know, that thing that comes up. The show, you know, notes. The show notes. The show notes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, once again, thank you, everybody, for listening. You know, I hope everybody's staying safe out there and, you know, we can get through this, uh, you know. Bust out an album you haven't listened to in a while. You know, dust off that vinyl, grab those CDs, delve into something that you haven't checked out before. And I'm going to throw the challenge out there again. I want everybody out there to at least listen to one album start to finish at least once a week. I want to throw that challenge out there. So, because like like we said before, like people do not listen to music the way that they used to. You know, it's just a song here, a song there, a playlist comes up, whatever. You know, grab an album out that you haven't heard in a while, listen to it all the way through, and I'm sure you'll be glad that you did. So, um, everybody out there, stay safe, be kind to each other, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. We will see you next time, and there definitely will be a next time. <laughs>